I was the first in my family to go into business, really, from a family of teachers. And but it was always, it always jarred with me this notion that it's all about dog eat dog, winner takes all, shareholder value maximisation. There must be more that business could do, um, and and so trying to turn business from being you know, to be a force for good in some ways. And I know Hiran's going to be talking about what, what he does in that, that kind of area. And I'm agnostic about whether that's business, private sector or public or, you know, for-profit, non-profit. How can we create the structures um, to do that? The other more more recent, um, I won't say there, it's not values, it's more of a framing of values. And Hiran, you and I have talked about this before, and, you know, sunflowers. <laughs> um, and I actually recently learned this word from botany, which is heliotropy. And it, it literally translated from Greek is helio, which is sun, and tropy, which is to turn towards. And it's from botany and it refers to the tendency of plants to grow in the direction of the sun. And I think we as humans are actually not that different. We will grow taller and stronger and faster when we are motivated by warmth and light and positivity. But <laughs> there's a big but here, like sunflowers don't, you know, float off into the clouds. Um, sunflowers are radical and radical in the origin of that word, which is rooted. Um, and so I think that's really important that we need to be rooted to each other and our communities. We need to be rooted to the science and what it's telling us and really grounded in, in the realities of the world we're living in right now. So um, kindness and courage as values and this ability to live in a space where we can be both hopeful and moved by a positive vision and a positive future that we know we all have the power to help be a part of creating whilst also staying grounded and rooted, just like those sunflowers. I'm actually also gonna pick up on, on what you termed on the, the courage thing actually, because I was, you know, when I was thinking about values, I was obviously going back to this community thing of community and 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 um, the notion of fairness and, and, and these traditional values, but I, I like the courage one as well, and I think that's certainly something that has um, come to the fore, I suppose, in in a lot of what I'm, I'm doing in business. I'm very interested in this notion, as, as you know, Shar, about how do we create the social entrepreneurs inside large organisations. There's lots of social entrepreneurs that you have to leave your job and you go out and you do something good, and it tends to be quite small and and, and look nice, but it's on a small scale and how can we awaken such people inside organizations? And, and and that means probably stepping away from the herd and going where the scary places where people say you shouldn't go, where your career's probably been going to be at risk, where you're going to be ridiculed and, and, and certainly <laughs> plenty of my fair share of that, trying to create a non-profit in a for-profit. But I, I like that. I, I, the courage thing, I think, is something that I think is increasingly going to be important for people to stand up for what they believe in, irrespective. There's plenty of people are going to follow the herd towards whatever that is, follow the sun, it's, you know, the sunflower. The sun has been shareholder value maximization in business and that mantra, and there's no shortage of people galloping, stampeding towards that. But it's more difficult, I think, to step away and it's going to need people to step. I'm trying to find the, I'm just listening to you guys talking and all these pictures are running through my mind. So, but they're not the same image. So I'll, I'll get to your answer, Phil, but I need to kind of go around this, this little um, this little logic chain. So it feels like what we're saying is the movement of movements towards what? What are we moving towards? Act, you know, act, and then we talk about activism. Activism towards what? Now we're talking about social entrepreneurs as well as entrepreneurs to push the organization towards what? Right. So and and it, it all of those. Feel, so if you look back in time, just decade after decade after decade, what you see is the number of activists and movements, act, you know, people engaged in movements and companies moving in the right path and investors moving in the right path has done nothing but increase. So the movement we're trying to accelerate has been increasing for a long time. And yet we're backsliding on climate, on biodiversity loss, on all kinds of critical issues. So the movement keeps growing and we're saying, let's put even more hands and more energy into growing this 
activism from outside, inside, or, you know, movements, etc. So, so I feel like we're just holding this gigantic boulder over our shoulders and trying to climb up a very steep hill. You know, and we want more and more people to get together and push on this. We need more movements engaged on pushing this boulder and more activists and so on. But the boulder is so ridiculously heavy, it will never get up that hill, in my opinion. You cannot bring a legacy architecture dating back centuries. It's like trying to get a horse and buggy, go from a horse and buggy to a Tesla in one leap. It just can't happen. It's not designed. And so, and then the other side of it is, and this is where the metaphor falls apart, somewhere on top, like in this, like it's the top of the hill, whatever, there's this really beautiful vista where there's a bunch of settlers who've managed to sort of climb their way up there. But there's like just no infrastructure to support them. It's very difficult to be there. It's very difficult to get there unless you're, you know, I don't know. I, I, I can't connect the, the, the pictures, but my point is, even if these activists and movement of movements succeeded, it, there is, it's, it's impossible to be at the destination we're trying to go to because the infrastructure isn't there to support it. We're trying to habitate somewhere that cannot currently be supported. Unless we figure, we focus our minds directly on enabling that new that space at scale, we do economic development. We have to widen the aperture and say it is no longer sufficient to only develop the profit maximizing, financially centric mode of economic activity. Also grow the benefit optimizing mode of activity, right? Also, that's it. I, and then I, the movements have a place to move to. But, but here, is there something, uh, I'm going to pick up your analogy of the boulder going up the hill, and I'm thinking of more a snowball going down the hill, right? <laughs> gathering momentum and gathering, you know, size. Um, I was how, playing with that, but... How we, yeah. how we get there, well, but but I mean, I, I think there's some switch that needs to go on in the minds of certainly today today's leaders longer term i'm sure there's going to be fourth sector whatever but if we you know the what and then servers of what the sdgs sustainable development goals net zero we've got a reasonable barometer of where we need to go to the problem is at the moment we have this vicious circle of people you know trying to maximize short-term profit trying to um do a bit of csr on the side or sustainability to give them a license to operate burning out people, people making more and more money, working harder and harder, more and more unhappy. Something has to switch there where by if we reframe these challenges as the business opportunities, you know, estimated as you know, around about $12 trillion or something in terms of how we feed, nourish the next billion on the planet and they're coming and clean energy and provide them with water and sanitation and all these things, that's the SDGs. That is going to be an amazing opportunity for business to tap into that that value, and it's going to mean new business models, new hybrid models, um, and the ideas. I think again, back to this, you know, it's going to come from that body intelligence and heart intelligence of the people working in these institutions. And if we flip that and have people working in organisations whose north star is purpose and who are going out there and doing some of this good in the world, I know this might sound some you know, slightly nirvana and simplistic, but I do think there is something around the fact that we will have more engaged, more inspired, less burnt out people working for organizations who truly embrace and embed purpose rather than having it as a, a marketing derived um, mission that's statement. A, that's a brilliant, brilliant closing statement. Char, it turns out you get the last word, one minute. How would you tie this together from what you just heard from Harad and Give? Well, I would actually, I, I sort of agree. <laughs> I agree with all of this. Um, the only thing I would add, so it's not to try and tie it together, because I think both of these reflections sort of stand so strongly on their own. I, I, I'm not sure I can do justice to trying to summarize them and bring them together. Um, I think the thing that, that I'm left with just thinking about is who makes the decisions on this. And um, I, I'm following the work quite closely around citizens' assemblies and making sure that we have ways of, make, of, of listening to people whose voice might not always be in these conversations for a range of reasons. And, and if we are truly going to move to a place where we are, as you said here, having a wide aperture and, you know, give, as you said, like harnessing the collective ingenuity of people, then we, we just need to be very, very explicit in making sure we are we are going out as widely as possible. And I certainly am finding the work I'm learning about um, citizens' assemblies and how we how we reach out and listen to citizens being critically important for where this all goes next.